Diabetes is a chronic metabolic condition in which blood sugar levels are raised in the blood. When we eat the food, the food gets digested. After the digestion of carbohydrates, glucose is formed. This glucose will be moved into the cells where it will be utilized for the production of energy, which is used for our day-to-day -day activities. Insulin is the hormone which helps in moving the glucose from the blood into the cells. But in diabetic patients, either there is insufficient insulin production or the insulin may not be working properly because of which sugar levels will increase in the blood. That is what is diabetes. Increased sugar levels or the glucose levels in the blood is considered as diabetes. Many different types of diabetes like type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, Modi diabetes, Lada diabetes, gestational diabetes. But generally we see uh, type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Type 1 is a diabetes which happens generally in the kids. It is considered as insulin dependent diabetes. Type 1 diabetes generally happens because of our own immune system attacks the beta cells of pancreas which produces insulin. When the beta cells of pancreas gets attacked by our own immune system and gets damaged because of our immune system attack, those beta cells will not be able to produce insulin in the body. As insulin is not able to be produced in the body, we require external insulin injections in type 1 diabetes. In type 1 diabetes, as we discussed, it is an autoimmune disease, which is generally because of the genetic factors or the environmental factors. But if we take type 2 diabetes, the causes may be like unhealthy lifestyle, improper diet, lack of physical activity and sedentary lifestyle, stress. All these factors are increasing the risk of getting diabetes especially type 2 diabetes, which happens in the adults. The unfortunate thing is, in most of the cases, diabetes will not show any kind of symptoms. A lot of people are undiagnosed. Even though they are having diabetes, as they are not getting any symptoms, they feel that they are normal people. Diabetes generally diagnosed accidentally when you go to hospital for some other health issue. When we check the sugars, your sugars are on higher side. But there are certain symptoms that will indicate that the person is having diabetes, like excess thirst, excess hunger, excess urination, and poor wound healing, recurrent infections. These are the certain things that is indicating that the person is having diabetes. Insulin is a hormone that is generally produced in our body by a gland called pancreas. This insulin plays an important role in moving the glucose from the blood into the cells. When you take the food, the food gets digested. After the digestion of carbohydrates, glucose and the sugar is formed, which is released into the blood. Then your pancreas will produce the insulin. This insulin plays an important role in moving the glucose from the blood into the cells where it is utilized for the production of energy. But in type 2 diabetes patients, insulin is not working properly because of the insulin resistance. If we see type 1 diabetes patients, their body is not producing insulin, so they are requiring the insulin injections. But in type 2 diabetes patients, with the lifestyle changes, you will not require insulin. But in type 2 diabetes patients also, even they are not able to control their diabetes with the oral medicines. And if their body is not able to produce sufficient insulin, we generally recommend insulin injections when the body is not able to produce sufficient insulin. To diagnose the diabetes, we generally do blood tests, like fasting blood sugar levels, which is generally we do after overnight fasting of 8 hours. And postprandial blood sugars, which we do after taking the food, 2 hours after taking the food. And there is something called HbA1c which is the average of three months of your blood sugar levels. So these are the three different tests that we do that will help us to diagnose diabetes, fasting blood sugars, post blood sugars, and HbA1c. And HbA1c, we can consider as more accurate compared with fasting and post blood sugar levels. Diabetes causes a lot of health complications in the longer run. 
when you get diagnosed with the diabetes, that will not show any kind of complications at the beginning stage, but in the longer run, it causes a lot of life-threatening complications like diabetic retinopathy or cataracts or glaucoma. These are the eye-related complications. And if you see the brain, that causes brain stroke or paralysis, heart-wise. It increases the risk of getting cardiovascular diseases or the heart attacks. And it causes damage to the kidneys and leading to the diabetic nephropathy. Eventually, the patient will land in chronic kidney disease and requiring dialysis. And poor wound healing, diabetic foot ulcers, ganglion formation, peripheral vascular disease, neuropathy. So these are all the multiple complications that happens in a diabetic patient in the long term. After 10 years or 15 years or 20 years of being diagnosed with the diabetes, any of these uh, complications may arise in the patient. That depends upon patient to patient. So that depends upon how well you are able to control the sugars. If a person is not able to control the sugars, if the sugar levels are 400 or 500, and if he is on insulin, we generally recommend them to check the sugars daily till the time we control the sugars. But if a person is having well-controlled glucose levels or sugar levels, so then generally we recommend to check the sugars like 15 days once, fasting and post sugars, and uh, HbA1c at every six months of period. So it is like, completely individualized according to the patient's conditions and the medications. And when we change the medicines, we recommend them to monitor the sugar levels more frequently. So it is completely an individualized uh, thing. So how frequently they need to monitor according to the patient condition, we recommend or the concerned doctor will recommend you to check the sugars. But it is important to have a glucometer at home. So you will be able to know whether you are able to control the sugars well or you are not able to control the sugars well, whether you are going to low sugars or whether you are going to high sugars, everything you will be able to monitor at home when you have a glucometer at your home. Diabetes itself is a lifestyle disease. We are getting diabetes because there is something wrong happening with your lifestyle. When you correct the mistakes that you are doing in your day-to-day -day life, you will be able to prevent diabetes and if you are having diabetes also, you will be able to control it well and you will be able to prevent a lot of complications that happens with the diabetes. So what you can do about that? What are the changes that you can start with which will be helpful for you to control your blood sugar levels and prevent diabetes if you are not having it? First thing is cut down the processed foods and the packaged foods. Packaged and processed foods are loaded with high amounts of sugars, salt and high calorie foods. They contain less amount of fiber. They doesn't have much nutrients. So cut down the processed and packaged foods. First thing. Second thing, include a lot of natural foods in your diet. Like a lot of low glycemic index fruits. If you are having diabetes, if you are not having diabetes, you can take any fruits. Include a lot of vegetables in the form of salads or the vegetable juices. A lot of nuts, seeds. So basically, you need to include a lot of natural foods into your diet and cutting down the processed foods. Third thing. Include a lot of complex carbohydrates and cut down the simple carbohydrates. How can we know the foods are whether that is complex or the simple? So simple carbohydrates are like white bread, white rice, honey. All these are simple carbohydrates. Complex carbohydrates, brown rice, brown bread, vegetables. All these things comes under the complex carbohydrates. Complex carbohydrates contains high amounts of fiber, which will help in releasing the glucose and the sugars slowly into the blood. So include more of complex carbohydrates and reduce the intake of simple carbohydrates. And manage your stress. Stress is the major culprit for diabetes or the heart attacks or the hypertension. So many lifestyle diseases are happening because of the chronic stress. So you need to manage the stress by doing meditation or the pranayama. Okay. All these things will help to manage the stress. When you manage the stress, you'll be able to control your blood sugar levels. And fourth, fifth important change that will be helpful for you to control your sugars is having good quality sleep of six to eight hours. The quality and duration of sleep both are important. And most important is when you're going to bed, that is important. If you see, a lot of people are going to bed by 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Your body's mechanism is designed to go to bed early and wake up early in the morning. 
So ideal time to go to bed is like 10 to 11 is the ideal time. The early, the earlier you go to bed, the better it is for your health. So prioritizing the sleep and doing the physical activity. The recommended physical activity is like 150 minutes of physical activity over a period of one week of time. So all these are the simple, simple lifestyle changes which will be helpful for you to control the blood sugar levels and prevent diabetes if you are not having, if you are having to control your sugar levels and prevent a lot of complications that happens with the diabetes. 